every heterosexual couple that obtains a marriage license was at some point ineligible to marry due to the varied age restrictions placed on marriage. Yet the federal administrative system finds itself adequately equipped to accommodate their change status. Yeah. So you, you check the, the um, married filing jointly box instead of the, uh, the, the single or the um, yeah, in fact, married fi filing singly. Yeah. In fact, he suggests that the enactment of DOMA actually places a burden on federal agencies because no longer can they simply say, are you married in your state? Okay. Now they have to go check right. whether you're married in the state that allows, you know, whether or not you're married to someone of the same sex. Um, which becomes critically important. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. I've lost where he says it now. Oh. <laughs> okay. Sorry. No, it's okay. Take your time. <laughs> um, well, he, he goes on to say somewhere that... Um, I wish I had the words here. Um, I've lost it. <laughs> That's Sorry. Okay. You can lose it. You've done pl plenty of talking. You have the right to lose it. Um, very, very nice stuff. And I really like this judge. Um, clearly, um, very bright guy. And um, I really like the way he worded this. Um, the, the, the Massachusetts judge did a really, really good job. Yeah. And he's very clear. And it gets into great, great detail throughout. Um, the rational basis inquiry and how judgments can be made, the burden of proof and all that. I've skipped those sections because they're much drier than what I have read. Right. But, yeah. Um, obviously very well thought out. Um, very good stuff. And um, what is this judge's name, by the way? This case is Gill et al. versus the Office of Personal Management. Um, J. Tauro, T-A-U-R-O. Hmm. Was is the is the Massachusetts judge? Uh, hmm. Not a Massachusetts judge. He's the it's United States District Court, District of Massachusetts. Right. Yeah. Very very well thought out. Very uh, very nicely written. I thought what I've read of it. Um, I thought it was very nice. Um, and it just it basically it just sort of um, reiterates kind of what we've known all along. Um, yeah. That it's it's an issue of equality. It's an issue of being treated, treated equally under the law um, in, as opposed to setting up the country as a Christian government. You know, um, We've got Israel as a Jewish government. We've got Iran as an Islamic government. There are those out there that would love to see this country's laws, much like Sharia, based on the verbiage of the Bible. And while we may owe some of our morality historically to Judeo-Christian ideals, which themselves grew out of other sources, um, the country, this country, is based on uh, civil law. Yeah. And under civil law, civil marriage um, is <laughs> more, <laughs> more and more being explained as, as a fundamental right that's equally protected for all people. Yeah. And and for the slippery slope folks that are worried about people marrying their goats. Oh, <laughs> you know. A, a goat has no standing. Animals have no standing under the law to, to consent to marriage. Yeah, um, you know, they really are grabbing at straws with some of that stuff. I mean, come on. You know, the... Um, the, the, the Prop 8 judge from, Calif from the, the, the Northern California District Court, Federal District Court, um, had, had, had explained time and time again, and I didn't read all of them, that marriage is between two people who are willing to make a committed relationship, who enter into it with, with consent to form, a, to, to form the foundation of a household. All, that's what he distilled from all of the various different definitions of marriage that he was able to come across, is that it boiled down to two people with consent, entering jointly into a relationship to form the basis of a household. Yeah. No goats involved there. Yeah. Two people with consent. Those are the first two requirements. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, but, but I think you know, throwing those kind of arguments out there sort of shows their desperation a little bit. You know, it's, it's like oh. clearly bogus arguments. This is, this is what I was looking for. Um, 
The pursuit of consistency in the distribution of federal marriage-based benefits can only constitute a legitimate government objective if there exists a relevant characteristic by which to distinguish those who are entitled to receive benefits from those who are not. Notably, there is, readily, there is a readily discernible and eminently relevant characteristic on which to base such a distinction, marital status. Congress, by premising eligibility for these benefits on marriage in the first instance, has already made the determination that married people make up a class of similarly situated individuals different in relevant respects from the class of non-married people. And he, he does return to it later where he makes a, 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 an even stronger argument that when Congress enacted these as marriage benefits, they weren't enacting them as heterosexual marriage benefits. The distinction they were making is between married and non-married people. Right. Non-married people don't get them. Married people do. If the state says you're married, Congress, uh, the federal government, by drawing a second-level distinction between same-sex married and opposite-sex married couples, is drawing a distinction that there's no basis for. When the, legis when the benefits were enacted, they were enacted to benefit married couples, all right. married couples, equally. And it's drawing a distinction they've never done before. And it's drawing a distinction between two similarly situated sets of, uh, 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 of people without a rational basis. You know, the, the point he makes, when Congress premised these benefits on marriage, it was to distinguish these benefits as not eligible to unmarried people. Yeah. Yeah, we don't need subsets of that. <laughs> but so yeah. So anyway, so that's that's really good news. Um, so yeah, both of those, the California Prop Eight um, federal district ruling and the Massachusetts Gill federal district ruling, um, there are certain you know they're 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 showing, and this was one of the when they were interviewing people after the Prop Eight ruling. This is one of the things that that a bunch of people were saying is. They're showing basically that at the federal level, there are a set of inalienable rights that the citizens of this country are entitled to, even if they're, impo even if they're unpopular right. with groups of people at the state level. States cannot pass legislation that will remove fundamental federal rights. Yes, yeah. there, are some, there are many cases where the federal government has to recognize the state's right to uh, restrict or expand people's rights within the state. But at the but at the federal level, our country defines certain uh, certain rights as fundamental, and those can't be restricted even by states. Right. Very very good stuff, and um, and yeah, and it's it. God, it just makes sense. I mean, it's sort of, isn't that what we're all about? <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on, this is America, you know. The the irony is this really sort of sounds like live and let live. Yeah. You know, you can go. You know, and hey. Your kid comes home, your, your daughter comes home and says, somebody told me that I can marry a girl. You're perfectly free to tell them, not in this family you can't. You know, it wasn't so long ago, I was mentioning this in the car, it yeah. wasn't so long ago that, you know, just recently, Chelsea Clinton got married to a Jewish boy. That's right. Yeah. An interfaith marriage. And it wasn't big news. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't a big deal. Yeah, good for her. Interracial marriages, interfaith marriages, these were all things that were taboo at some point because people were uncomfortable with them, because people were afraid of them. And over time, it became, they became non-issues. They became, you know, it's just a matter of equality. Yeah. Yeah. Change. Change is very scary for a lot of people. But it's good. Change is good. Change is, you know, good. and yeah. And so we're, we're very pleased about all of this. But, um, but anyway, um, good stuff, and uh, and hopefully this is sort of I, you know like I say it's sort of I, I see the tide is sort of shifting, but of course I'm an optimist anyway. But, <laughs> but we th these are battles that we will win. You know, there's, it's it's one of those things when you know we sit here and we talk about this stuff. But the fact of the matter is, it's it's sort of hard. You know, it's hard to make any kind of an argument that we're not right. It's all based on, on nonsense. It's based on, I don't like your kind, and so it's, you can't exist. And, it, and it's like, no, it doesn't based, work that way in this country. It's based on something, on people's personal opinion. It's irrational. It's not based on any kind of legal standing. So. And they were sooner or later, sooner or later, the rational win over the irrational. Guess what?
Well, with about a minute left, I think there's two things I'd like to say real quick. We're down to a minute. Wow. I think so. Sorry. Aren't we down to a minute, guys? Um, firstly, no, uh, that come October, we're going to be mm. on channel 25 instead of 24 at this time. Yes, that's right. We're switching channels. We're going to switch um, channels. Just for, uh, for 13 weeks. For the 13 weeks. We're going to switch channels. We'll be on same time. Same time. Just different stations. Same trans time, same uh, <laughs> different trans channel. Different trans channel, that's right. We're going, um, we're going from... Um, from live to taped. Yes, and we have to go. So thanks for joining us, and we will see you next week. Bye-bye.